Hi, this is George Mount with Enterprise DNA, and in this tutorial, we will look at frequency and proportion tables in Excel. When to use them, what they are, the pros and cons of each, and so forth. So this slide deck, the data set will be available to you. I will keep going and introduce you to the idea of categorical variables, which is the crux of why we would make a frequency or a proportion table to begin with. So when you think of categorical variables, uh, the f expression apples and oranges is a good one to keep in mind. The idea here is that we are finding in this variable what kind of something is being recorded. So for example, fruit type would be apple, orange, kiwi, etc. There's really no way to quantitatively compare those categories per se. We can't say that a kiwi is an orange plus an apple or something like that, right? All we can do is assign a label to each of these values, which means that we are going to count the frequencies. If we have, let's say, these number of fruits, how many are apples, how many are oranges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what we're going to do in Excel. We're going to do, do that a couple different ways. We're going to use pivot tables to do that uh, in either case. So what I will have you do, you're going to find a file, this housing file, that will be our raw data. I'm going to add an index column to that. You're going to see why that's really important. And then we're going to use pivot tables to count up how many apples are there, how many oranges are there. Of course, it's not fruit data set, it's housing data set, uh, but you get the idea. We'll make frequency tables, we'll make proportion tables. We will consider the pros and cons of each, you'll understand what each of them are. Okay, so I'm gonna meet you over at that housing file and we'll get started. All right, I am here in our data. Now, like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is create an index column because what I'm trying to do here is count up, let's say, how many of these homes have a driveway or not. And the thing with pivot tables is that they want to aggregate the data, right? And we don't want to aggregate the data. We want to count the number of observations, right? That doesn't make sense. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. I'm going to put index right here. Now, you could do this in Power Query, but we're sticking with just basic Excel right now. And I'm going to put the numbers one and two here. Uh, I'm going to select these rows and then use our flash fill here. So we have each of these rows numbered. Now, you know what? The other thing I'm going to do, and it's not necessary really in this case, but I really prefer and insist that my data in Excel be kept in a table. I'm going to click OK. It looks better, not to mention there are some other benefits. That would be a nice video, actually. So stay tuned possibly for that. But let's get back to the case at hand here. The other thing, table name, let's give this a better name than just table one, right? We're trying to be good data hygienists here. So we'll name this housing. OK, so like I said, how many homes have a driveway or not? That's going to be our first step. I'm going to use a pivot table to do that. So I'm going to insert a pivot table. Our data range is housing. There's already one benefit. It's very, very clear what our source data is. Uh, let's put it in an existing worksheet. We'll just put it in the same place. We'll put it over here to the side. I'm going to click OK. OK, so like I said, and you know, we can move this over a little more. Oops, not that far. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, so we've got our pivot table. And how many homes have a driveway? Well, we can find that out. I'm going to move this over to the rows. And then what I'm going to do is take my index and it's going to try to sum it. Excel's not always so smart. We need to correct its ways here. I'm going to go to value field settings and I want to make this a count. So now what we're seeing here is that of the 546 homes, 77 don't have a driveway and 469 do. Those are our frequencies. So again, we can't necessarily divide the yeses by the noes or something like that, but we can count 
whether each is a yes or no, and we end up with, with this number. So this is called a one-way frequency table because we are counting the frequencies one way by one variable. Now let's make this a two-way frequency table. So I'm gonna take another one of these. Let's just use air conditioning, may as well. I'm gonna drag this over to the columns. You could drag it to the rows. It's more common to have your two-way frequency table put in this manner where we've got one of the variables along the columns, uh, another down the rows. Okay, so if you think about this, we still have to see the 77 and the 469, except we've bifurcated it, right, uh, with the homes, air conditioning, no area. So we can say that of the 546 homes, we've got 158 that do have air conditioning, do have a driveway. Um, 62 of them do not have either, and then either or for those other values. Okay, so this is called a two-way frequency table. You sometimes will hear this called a contingency table. Uh, we are going to dig into this a little further now. Okay, so we have 546 homes, but it's hard to know exactly what percent of values are in each of these buckets, right? So so unless you're really good at mental math, it, it may be hard to divide 62 into 546 very quickly and understand what percentage of each uh, are in these buckets. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I am going to click here on count of index now. If I right click that, it's gonna say summarize values by its account, so you can change that. But I'm gonna to go to show values as, and we have a bunch of options here. It's pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna make this a percent of grand total. So we have turned those raw values into percentages. So now we can tell, okay, this category is 11.36%, uh, over half the homes do have a driveway but don't have air conditioning, so that's interesting. And this is a really small number, 2.75%, right? So these numbers are easier for us to comprehend in some ways, right? They're percentages, we're, we're used to looking at percentages. Uh, we've artificially scaled down the data into hundreds, right? And everything's in, in buckets of 100, which is a pretty intuitive way for us to look at the data. Uh, one other thing that's nice with this is, you know, maybe what we wanna know instead is what percent of the records that don't have a driveway, what percent of them are in the no's and the yeses for air conditioning. So if we wanted to do that, we could actually change our values, we would make that a row total, right? So we are slicing each of these rows, finding out what percent are in each of those. Uh, but, but more typically, you'll see it set up as the grand total. So let's keep it like that. Now, this is good. But you know, one thing that's hard with these percentages is that we've kind of artificially scaled down the data, right? We don't know 2.75% of what. That, that would be important to know. Um, if it's a really small, if it's 2.75% of you know, 120 observations, then that's a really small number, right? If it's 2.75% of 1,000 observations, that's still you know, a sizable number, right? So this, we're kind of lacking context when we just look at things in percentages. So you can kind of pick your poison here, or what you can do is actually, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna drag my index here, double drag it, and of course we do wanna change that as a count. But now, now you're seeing both, right? We're seeing the proportions, and we're also seeing the frequencies. And I could even, actually type right over this, uh, change this to per, uh, frequency and proportion, right? And then, you know, we may as well make this look a little easier. There's some extra formatting we can do, but you get, you get the idea. So frequency tables, proportion tables, these are for categorical variables. 
we have to count them, right? There's no other mathematics we can do. And we can look at the raw numbers. We could also look at the proportions. So hope that you learned something about frequency and proportion tables, how to do it in Excel. Using that index column, let us count up those numbers of IDs, right? And the raw frequencies give us a lot of information about the data, right? Because we're not scaling it down artificially, but it can be hard to compare the uh, relative magnitude of each of those figures. Whereas the proportion tables, it's a lot easier to look at things when they're sliced into 100. Um, but in a way, we can say that we're losing context when we do that, right? So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you check out the rest of the channel and let us know what else you'd like to see. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.